So this is Debbie Hassan, and I'd like to officially call our 2020 annual meeting of the Girl Scouts of Eastern Pennsylvania to order. Welcome. I appreciate you joining us during our first ever virtual annual meeting. These have obviously been extraordinarily challenging times, not just for us, but for the entire world. And it's heartening to know that we at Girl Scouts have been stepping up to help while also adapting resourcefully, just like we've done for 108 years. We're going to hear a little more in a bit about how One Girl Scout has been helping our essential workers through this pandemic. I also want to do a plug for our creativity during this time. GSEP has been on the forefront of offering Girl Scouts at Home programming for all of our girls at all ages. We also have resources available for parents and virtual camp program programming as well. So please check out Girl Scouts at Home at gsep.org if you have not already done so. And a couple housekeeping items at this point. Um, as we proceed through the meeting, I wanna offer some logistical reminders for all of our attendees. For those of you who signed in before 9.30 a.m., this is probably redundant information, but some have joined later. So a reminder, everyone will be muted. Only our staff facilitators can unmute you. If you have a question or comment as shown on the screen, you can type it in the chat log located in the control panel. If you don't see the question or chat log, you will have to press the arrow in the red box. That will expand your control panel. Please know only a few people can see and respond to the questions or comments. That includes the staff facilitators, which is three members of our bylaws committee, Susan Groff, Marianne Rada, and Susie Walters, and our parliamentarian, Mary Scout. They will be determining whether the question or comment is relevant to the issue at hand. If it is relevant, they will verbally share it with all of the attendees for you. So please be aware, we may hear some other voices chime in from time to time throughout today's meeting. Okay, moving on. All members of the Delegate Council received an email earlier this morning with the link to vote. Please remember that this includes board members, board development committee members, service unit delegates, girl delegates, and girl advisors. You should have already done the first step which is choosing your name in the drop-down menu and clicking the arrow in the green box. This is how we were able to confirm quorum today and the number of voting members present. Please keep this window open on your laptop, tablet, or phone. This is how we will be doing all voting today's, during today's meeting. And we encourage you to stay on the webinar for the entire meeting since we need two-thirds of our voting members to vote on the bylaws which is the eighth and last vote of the morning. So please hang in there with us. I'm gonna pause in case anyone has questions and I don't see anything coming from me. So at this point, I'm now going to ask our girl advisors to lead us in a traditional opening ceremony in our new online environment. Ladies, in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. On my honor, I will try to serve God and my country, to help people at all times, and to live by the Girl Scout law. I will do my best to be honest and fair, friendly and helpful, considerate and caring, courageous and strong, and responsible for what I say and do, and to respect myself and others, respect authority, use resources wisely, make the world a better place, and be a sister to every Girl Scout. Thank you, girls. It is always good to be reminded of what makes our organization unique, and the Promise in Law offers us a strong foundation of interacting with other people during this and other crises. At this point, we are going to move to our mission moment. We actually have two parts to our mission moment today. 
The first mission moment is the presentation of our governance award. As most of you know, the governance award recognizes a volunteer who has provided outstanding and consistently dedicated service to the policy area of the council. This year, I am extraordinarily pleased to share that we are presenting the award to someone who lives and breathes governance all year long. And that person is Deb Walters. Deb actually received the governance award back in 2013, but her work this past year in governance has gone above and beyond, and we felt that she needed to be recognized again. Her collaborative leadership of the bylaws committee's work and her dedication to maintaining governance excellence is absolutely unparalleled. The work updating our bylaws started with all of your input at the fall delegate meeting. Deb made sure the opinions and questions of our service unit delegates and girl delegates were heard and respected. Her willingness to, quote, get it done right, also had her scouring the country for expert advice, including talking with experts at GSUSA, other local nonprofit governance attorneys, bylaws from the top 10 councils, as well as exhaustive research with state legal and parliamentary resources. She is, for all who know her, obviously deeply uh, a believer in good governance and that it forms a strong foundation for work. We at GSCP are lucky to have her in the sisterhood. To all of our attendees, you should also know Deb is currently the secretary for our board of directors, chair of the bylaws and policy subcommittee, co-chair of the adult camping weekend, a member of the board development committee, as well as, in her spare time, a national governance volunteer for Girl Scouts of the United States of America. And that is quite a list. Thank you, Deb, for your commitment to our council and the movement overall. Congratulations. And Deb, although we can't present your governance award in person, we have sent you a token of appreciation. Would you like to say a few words at this point? If you can get your mic on. Uh, this is Deb. Um, I'm speechless. Um, I'm glad there's no webcam on me right now. Um, too many tears in my eyes to be able to see anything else that's going on. Uh, thank you so much. Um, I've already received a text from my daughter, who is a brand new delegate, saying, good job, Mom. And that means almost as much. No, that means more than the Governance Award. Um, so. Thank you, thank you all. Thank you to my most awesome bylaws committee and everybody else that I've worked with in Girl Scouting. Uh, my texts are going a little wild right now. I'll get back to you guys in a little bit. Uh, thank you, uh, thank you everybody. Congratulations, Deb, and thank you for everything you do and will continue to do for us. At this point, I'd now like to invite our Camp Moseywood director to share a few thoughts on how our virtual Girl Scouts at Home programming is going. Abe, can we have, turn the mic over to you? Thank you, Debbie. Good morning, everyone. Um, as many of you know, I'm a camp person. I am at camp almost every weekend throughout the year. However, just like many of you, my world has changed a lot in the last uh, couple months. Um, my skills in making great program for girls has changed from being at camp and schools to a virtual setting behind a screen. Um, I've learned a huge amount about technology these past couple months, uh, trying to make it great for the girls in this really weird time. Um, while in my normal life, I spend most of my life trying to get away from technology, I still carry a flip phone because I like a flip phone. Um, so these past couple of months have been different. Um, and we started doing uh, some Zoom calls with camp-like themes each Saturday night. Um, Saturday nights right now are my favorite of the week because while I totally sleep in on a Saturday morning usually, um, and I have to get myself in the mindset of getting back in front of a screen, uh, making sure that everything's re ready to go, my slideshow, my lineup, and being peppy and happy in front of a screen again, um, I always leave my Saturday night calls feeling really good. Campers, staff, and alumni from come together um, on our camp Zoom chats. Um, two weeks ago, we did a talent show that had people doing gymnastics, playing instruments, singing, and doing magic tricks, a lot like we would 
um, at camp during the summer. Um, and this past Saturday night, we had our second virtual campfire. This picture um, that you are all seeing is Hope. She is a daisy from Montgomery County. And what you're seeing is her roasting marshmallows while singing along to our songs on her computer. And right now in uh, our current situation, I think this is the perfect camp picture. And I just wanted to share that all with you. Thank you, Abe, for showing how love of camp continues even during a pandemic. Since these are unprecedented times, we're now going to hear some remarks from our CEO, Kim Fredis Dow, on how Girl Scouts of Eastern Pennsylvania has been working through the challenges, which are many, presented by this public health crisis. Kim? Thank you, Debbie. First and foremost, I hope you and your family remain healthy during these difficult times. A heartfelt thank you to our Girl Scout families who have members serving as healthcare workers, first responders, and other essential jobs fighting the battle against COVID-19. We are all indebted to you. We are also encouraged and so supportive and appreciative of the many girls, parents, caregivers, and volunteers who have offered acts of kindness and service to the greater community and our Girl Scout community. Whether making and sharing much needed masks or delivering food to senior citizens or delivering awesome programs and virtual meetups, we couldn't be more proud of what you have and will continue to do to give back and make a meaningful impact. Thank you. And to those who are suffering from or are caring for or recovering from the virus, you are all in my thoughts and prayers for strength and resilience and a complete recovery. We find ourselves in an unprecedented time for social and economic challenges during the COVID-19 pandemic. In what seemed like an instant, we moved from gathering in person to our current normal of social distancing and remote communications. Today, we have more attendees than any other annual meeting in the recent past. And I wanna thank you for prioritizing attending today. It is good to be sharing this time with all of you. The situation has provided us with an unexpected and amazing opportunity to see what we can do. Our council leadership and that of our sister councils was quick to mobilize and develop Girl Scouts at Home, a full complement of girl programming at every age level and volunteer resources with the aim of bringing our community together in meaningful ways virtually. As CEO of GSCP, I've led our organization through three phases of emergency response. The first phase was about the safety and well being of our staff and membership, and also the social responsibility we have to our Girl Scout community. We began working remotely on Friday, March 13th, and canceled all in person programming through May 11th, and started planning for what was to become Girl Scouts at Home. We also froze our open positions and educated the team about FMLA and unemployment benefits should they need to take some time off to take care of their families. We also finalized the cookie program and the sale of the Lehigh Valley Service Center. Phase two or weeks three through five was about reshaping our organization and resuming our operations. We did an audit of our work and the remaining personnel we had after some opted to take a leave. We furloughed our part-time staff and launched our virtual programming and communications, Girl Scouts at Home. We trained our volunteers on virtual meeting guidelines and resources and held our first virtual troop meetings, Facebook Live events, and meetups. We didn't know how it would go, but we didn't want that to hold us back from getting started. And with your help, the determination of our team, and the engagement and interests of girls and volunteers, our programs continue to get better and better every week. More than 40% of our staff activated to ensure that Girl Scouts at Home got off the ground, and I am so proud of their efforts. During this time, our finance team was also able to secure a coveted Small Business Association Payroll Protection Plan loan, which enables us to continue to retain our staff during this unsettling time. Additionally, we made the tough but important decision to cancel all Girl Scout programming through June 19th, or the end of the school year. Phase three just started last week and is all about setting GSCP up to be stronger now and in the future. Since we are able to maintain our team, we want to ensure that everyone has real work to do to help us move our mission forward. 
The remaining workforce of 80 people has been deployed into an interim organization structure through at least June 30th that will help us continue to provide excellent girl programs and an excellent volunteer experience. The ever-evolving environment continues to impact our future decisions about camp and other Girl Scout programs. We will likely be making more decisions about this in the coming week. We are also keenly focused on helping our volunteers, the lifeblood of Girl Scouting, to feel supported with resources and new skills to continue leading our girls virtually. We will, of course, continue to provide Girl Scouts at Home programming, as well as explore the possibility of virtual Girl Scout camp. However, we know the strength and sustainability of Girl Scouting happens in communities, and we'll make sure to do everything we can to ensure leaders have the confidence to continue their important work building girl leaders. That concludes my update on our COVID-19 emergency action plan. I want to pause to see if anyone has any questions at this time. Kim, we have nothing in the, the question log right now. Thanks, Tracy. OK. OK, so Can thank I you all for everything you're doing to make our world better now and every day. I look forward to speaking with you again a little later to give the management update. Debbie? Thank you, Kim, for sharing that information, and more importantly, for your leadership during these extraordinary circumstances. At this time, I'd like to introduce our parliamentarian, Mary Scout, whom you may remember from previous annual meetings. Mary is a professional registered parliamentarian who has been the parliamentarian for Dance Masters of America, the New Jersey PTA, and of course, our GSCP annual meetings. Mary will now share an overview of the parliamentary rules we will be using at today's meeting. Mary? Tracy, while you work with Mary, should we have Deb overview the quorum report? Yes, I think we should. Deb, you're unmuted. You can go ahead whenever you want. Thank you. Uh, Madam Chair, our bylaws require 40%, which would be 72 delegates, to be present in order to conduct business but I am happy and proud to support that we have 152 voting delegates present and we have reached quorum. There are also many additional Girl Scouts and visitors here with us today. This is a record number of attendees and I thank you all for exercising your responsibility to participate in this annual meeting. We have a quorum. Thank you, Deb, and that enables us to conduct business. During our traditional in-person annual meetings, we would normally pause here to see if there are any objections to allowing a two-minute time limit for debate on issues. Instead, that process will be through the chat log. So as we proceed, if anyone has questions or comments, please use the chat log. Uh, Hello. Is that Mary? That I hear. Do we have Mary? We do have Mary. This is Mary. Can you hear me now? We can. Like we can. So we will turn it over to you, Mary. Thank you. Okay. I'm so sorry. I seem to have issues with my audio on my uh, computer. Anyway, I wanted to say that it's nice to be with you again this morning. And I have to say that I'm learning with you as this is my first virtual annual meeting. I have done virtual board meetings, but not annual meetings, and I commend you for being uh, able to organize all this in such a short period of time. The application of parliamentary law is the best method yet devised to enable assemblies of any size to do regard for every member's opinion to arrive at the general will on the maximum number of questions of varying complexity and a minimum amount of time, and under all kinds of internal climate ranging from total harmony to hardened or impassioned division of opinion. That is, these rules are based on a regard for the majority, the minority of individual members, of absentees, and of all these together. My role as parliamentarian for this meeting is to give advice to the chair and when requested to any other member. 
After the parliamentarian has expressed an opinion on a point, the chair has the duty to make the final ruling, and in doing so has the right to follow the advice of the parliamentarian or to disregard it. When you wish to speak, please raise your hand as you've been instructed on the screen, and after being recognized, make sure that you state your name and your service unit. Please address all your comments and questions to the chair, which I think you have no choice but doing under these circumstances. Everyone may speak twice on an issue or a motion, but you may not speak a second time until everyone who wants to speak has had an opportunity to speak once, and then you may speak a second time. We will be using a method of voting known as general or unanimous consent. This method is used without putting the vote to a motion to a formal vote. This voting method enables the meeting to move along quickly. The chair will state, if there are no objections, state the action to be taken and then pause. And when she pauses, this is your time to object and have the motion to put to a voice vote or another method of voting. If there are no objections, the chair will state, hearing no objections, the motion is approved. For other motions, you have been instructed on how to vote using your computer. At any time, if you want to make a motion and don't know whether it's in order or need assistance wording it, please ask and we'll be happy to assist you. Thank you very much and I look forward to working with you. Thank you all. So we do have a quorum, as Deb had already indicated. Hopefully, everyone can see the voting hand on the console. Um, and as a reminder, please submit your questions if you have them. So our next order of business is to approve the agenda for today's meeting, which is now shown on your screen. And I'm also going to just verbally summarize that agenda. As we informed you in the official notice, which was emailed to you on April 2nd, this year's annual meeting involves our traditional subjects, including the approval of the agenda, the minutes committee, and tellers. We will then hear a short governance report from me, our treasurer's report, and management report from our CEO. The board development committee will then ask for approval on the proposed slates for board members, girl advisors, BDC members, girl delegates, and NSC delegates. We will also be voting on the new proposed bylaws. Finally, we will recognize our top cookie sellers and scholarship recipients. There are a total of eight motions to vote on today, and approving the agenda will be our first vote this morning. Next screen. Voting members need to toggle over to the window they checked in by choosing their name. And hopefully a number of you are probably using a second device as I am just for the voting, but this is what you should see. The next step is to click on the link to vote on question number one, approval of the annual meeting agenda. This will take you to a box where you need to fill in the password shown on your screen. And that password for this first vote is GIRL, G-I-R-L, all lowercase. And I'm doing it simultaneously with you. And click the green arrow to log your vote. Give it a few minutes to see how this is working with our technical team. Once you voted, you just wait and do not click the link further. Keep your screen open. And we're gonna pause while we wait for the results. Okay. This is Charlene. I just wanna let you know that so far we are at, uh, we are at 143 in favor.
we are we keep still... increasing as well. Okay, so we're still receiving votes, Charlene? We are still receiving some votes, but we have passed over 51%. Which is great. So should we close it at this point? Yes, we can do that. Let me, I'll just refresh one last time and give you a final number. We're at 147 in favor and zero against. Great, thank you, Charlene. Since we have a majority in the affirmative, the agenda is officially adopted. Thank you to our delegate council members for your voting. I, as, I have also been assured the process gets easier and quicker as we continue. So we're gonna move right on to our next voting item at this point. Our next order of business is the approval of the minutes committee. As we do not meet again for a year, this committee will act on our behalf to review and approve the minutes in a timely manner. This year's minutes committee members are Karen Harris, Megan Hughes, Kristen Kaladi Ayadicio, and Olga Torres. We will now officially vote to approve the minutes committee members. So if you can go back to your voting screen on your device and your password this time is scout, all lowercase. And we'll just wait for the tallying from Charlene. Hi again, this is Charlene. Uh, just letting you know we are at 140 votes in favor. I will refresh again because they're coming in very quickly. Thank you, everyone. It seems like this is working well. Uh, we're at 146 in favor of and so far zero against. Um, I will just refresh one more time, but clearly we have surpassed the 51%. So again, we're at 146 in favor of zero against. Okay, so there being a majority in the affirmative, the minutes, minutes committee has been approved. Thank you to the minutes committee for agreeing to serve in this capacity on our behalf. The next order of business is to appoint our tellers. Charlene Reedy is the staff person who is an expert on Qualtrics, which is our voting platform. Charlene will serve as our head teller. To ensure transparency and ownership by volunteers of the voting process, Charlene will be sharing screenshots of the voting results with our other three tellers, Cassie Grow, Alexa Ionace, and Linda Mills. And thank you all, ladies, for agreeing to serve as our tellers. And thank you all again for joining me at the 2020 annual meeting. For the governance report, oops, do we have a slide? Delegate, re okay, sorry, <laughs> I'm losing my place here. I'll be doing a quick recap of our delegate meetings this year, giving a brief update on the 2020 National Council session, any NS, NCS proposals, and offering a special acknowledgement. So for a quick recap on delegate meetings. As you all may remember, one of the major topics discussed at both our fall and spring delegate meetings was our bylaws. You're going to hear more about this later on in the meeting from our expert, Deb Walters, but for now, please allow me to say thank you for your willingness to read all of our bylaws in detail and think about the best way to improve our governance here at GSEP. Another piece of information shared at the fall delegate meeting was our updated policies. Our smoking policy mandates all our properties, including our camps and offices are now smoke-free, vape-free, and tobacco-free. 
We also communicated our social media policy. Both updated policies can be found on the website in Volunteer Essentials. During our spring delegate meeting, we continued to work on the bylaws. That meeting occurred the week the governor mandated work from home protocols. So our CEO also shared the council's plans during the crisis. Additionally, we had two board members do an informal poll about the national council session proposals, which will be reviewed next. As a reminder, you can read an overview of the delegate meetings on the governance page of our website, which is located under the documents tab. If you or your service unit have any questions or want to suggest a topic for this September's fall delegate meeting, please email Carla Hickey at governance at gsep.org. Okay, National Council session for 2020. I want to share with you an important message we received about 10 days ago from Girl Scouts of the United States of America. The National Board held a special meeting on Tuesday, April 21st and they voted to hold a one-time virtual session for our 55th National Council session in October 2020. The board also voted at that time to cancel Girl 2020. This decision was made with the health and safety of all members of the Girl Scout movement at the as we've, continue, as we've continued to monitor public health experts' recommendations and forecasts, it became clear Girl Scouts could not hold a convention in person in October 2020 because we can't host a large scale in-person event and guarantee the health and safety of all the participants. Further, the decision allows us to honor the intent to bring the movement together to address the important business issues which will shape our future. The National Board made the decision now so they can maximize planning time for a virtual iteration of the 55th meeting while minimizing additional financial risk, members, councils, and GSUSA itself might incur for delaying such a decision. I wanted to let everyone know that although this is very disappointing and we were looking forward to going to Florida, the National Board made the hard decision with an eye toward maintaining the long-term health of our members and our movement, and it is the right decision for all of us. We will be electing our National Council session delegates a little later on in this meeting, because even though that trip to Orlando is canceled, there's still a lot of work for us to do nationally. The NSC delegate will still be expected to vote on national board members, national board development committee members, and the six proposals I would like to remind everyone about. The proposals are establishing a tax task force to examine the feasibility of a national gold award scholarship foundation, a constitutional amendment on consistency of delegate terms across the movement, and a lifetime membership discount for volunteers who have served 10 years or more, and three propo proposals about membership dues. First, if the National Board wants to change the dues, the proposal requires them to communicate and seek input from the National Council. The next proposal outlines more specific requirements about that communication, including sharing the intended use of the funds and potential impact on the movement prior to the change as well as a post-change reporting on the impact. Anytime the National Board plans to increase the dues by more than 25%, they must, must being in all caps, seek approval from the National Council. These are proposals that our NCS delegates are going to learn more about and discuss over the course of this summer. If you have any thoughts you wish to share with them, please email governance at gsep.org. Now, before I turn the meeting over to Rick Perkins for the treasurer's, treasurer's report, I do have a special acknowledgement. Next slide. I wanna let this group know how much the board has appreciated Naya, Sydney, and Brianna our GSEP girl advisors who served for the 2019-2020 year. We celebrated them at our board meeting, which took place just prior to this meeting. But I want all of you, our attendees, to know what wonderful, engaged young women we had working with us for this past year. So thank you again, Naya, Sydney, and Brianna. Next slide. 
Finally, I want to say how proud I am personally of the Girl Scouts of Eastern Pennsylvania, our board, staff, volunteers, adult members, girls and their families, and programmatic, programmatic and philanthropic partners. During this dreadful pandemic, we have come together to ensure that our council stays strong for both our girls and our communities. And thank you for all you do every day to ensure that Girl Scouting continues to make Eastern Pennsylvania and the world truly a better place. Our next order of business is our treasurer's report. So it's my pleasure at this point to turn the meeting over to Rick Perkins, our treasurer. Rick? Rick, you can unmute yourself now. Thank you, Debbie. Uh, in the lower left-hand corner of the uh, screen is a picture of me with a big smile. And I will tell you that when you see a treasurer uh, with a smile like that, it means he has or she has uh, very good news to report. And I'm here today to report on the state of the finances of the council. Uh, GSEP has a fiscal year that begins on October 1st and ends on, on September 30. And each year we engage an independent CPA firm to audit our financial statements and to review our internal controls. Uh, with that said, for fiscal year 2019, which began in, on October 1st, 2018 and went through September 30, 2019, I am pleased to tell you that the auditors have issued uh, what they call an unmodified report. I call it a favorable report uh, and found that our financial statements fairly represent our activities and our results for the year, which is the best outcome that you can have for an audit. Uh, can I have the next slide? Now I know these are not things that you deal with finances uh, all the time. And I hope you all do your best to follow what I'm gonna say, and I will do my best to explain it to you uh, as, as carefully as I can. The first chart shows revenue and expenses of the council. And I just wanna say that revenue is what comes in, expenses are what goes out. And when revenue is higher than expense, we say we have a surplus, which is a good thing. Now on this chart, each bar uh, from 2011 through 2019 represents the total revenue for the year broken down between earned revenue, which are the light gray bars, the light gray bars, and that includes cookie sales, camp, pro camp and program service fees, facility rentals, retail sales, and a few miscellaneous items. At the bottom, you'll see a dark bar in dark gray, which is our contribution revenue, our contributions, including corporate and foundation grants, individual donations, events, gifts in kind, and amounts we receive from United Way, okay? Also on the top of each bar, you'll see a little red triangle. Those are the expenses, okay? And you will see that in all years, from 2011 to 2019, uh, we had, with the exception of one, which is 2016, we had a surplus. Once again, that means that revenue was greater than expense. Uh, focusing on 2019, uh, the total revenue reflects an overall increase compared to 2018. Uh, GSCP was also able to keep fiscal year 2019 operating expenses relatively flat compared to the prior year. And as a result, we, met, we, we had managed to have a surplus of just over $200,000. And I will tell you, this could not have happened with the outstanding efforts of the management and the staff and the volunteers, and of course, the girls who sell the cookies. Okay. Uh, last summer, we prepared, management prepared, I should say, uh, a budget which is a plan for the upcoming year, okay? Um, revenues and expenses were both budgeted or planned to increase slightly over 2019 levels. And we expected at that time, which was last summer, 
to have a surplus for the year. Okay. The next three slides show information about fiscal year 2019. Okay, uh, this is the revenue slide. Once again, the revenue is what comes in. And you can see at the top, we had reven revenue of $16,871,000. Uh, the operating revenue is broken down by source on this chart between program service fees, uh, cookie sales and other income, contributions, uh, and that includes things like gr uh, grants, requests, and donations, and the amount that we get from the United Way. Our total operating revenue for the year was 2% higher than the prior year by $333,000. Earned revenue increased by $205,000, primarily due to uh, the increase in cookie sales over the prior year and a strong camp season. Contributed revenue increased by $128,000, attributable principally, or in part, I should say, to three very successful Take the Lead fundraising events. Do we have the next slide? This slide shows total expenses broken down by function, member services, camp programs, girl programs, fundraising, and general and administrative. And we say that 84% of our total expenses, that is the amount that goes out, the expenses, 84% of the total expenses went towards programs and services for girls. And we have tried very hard to increase that percentage so that uh, our direct girl program has been trending favorably. Uh, in 2015, 72% of our spending, our expenses, uh, went for girl programs, and now that is up to 84% in 2019, uh, thus ensuring that we're following our strategic plan, uh, which is to do more for the girls, uh, which is our, one of our key missions. Okay, if we could switch over again. Let's talk about something very important. That's the product program, which is the cookie sales and related expenses. Uh, the cookie program of GSUSA is the largest girl-led business in the country and helps girls develop five essential skills, goal setting, decision making, money management, interpersonal scale, skills, and business ethics. And we would say that 73% of the revenue from the cookie program, okay, benefits troops, service units, and all the Girl Scouts of Eastern Pennsylvania. Last year, more than $3 million was directed back to troops and service units, and almost $500,000 was used for recognition, including older girl travel, adventure credits, uh, cookie boss, and the 500 club. So that's what happens to all of that cookie money that we take in. Let's talk for a minute about 2020. What I've said just now has been about 2019. Uh, we did set a budget last summer and that budget for 2020 uh, was to have a small surplus. Okay, once again, we're talking about 2020 now. And I will tell you that for the first half of this fiscal year, total revenue has been 2% ahead of the goal. That first half started October 1, 2019, and went through March 31 of uh, 2020. The key performance indicator is that our cookie sales were 3.6% favorable to that budget. We had a record-setting number of boxes sold, 4,295,000, which was over 144,000 more boxes sold than last year. Plus, we had our highest ever per girl average, 217 boxes per girl, which meant that each girl sold an average of 25 more boxes of cookies than last year. We expect net revenue from the cookie program this year which was basically over and done and shipped and the cash collected uh, prior to March 31. But we expect that cookie program to beat the budget, exceed the budget by $250,000. 
other earned revenue in that first six month period from October through March 31, 2020 was short by uh, 7% of budget and that includes the other income and the contributed revenue lines. We were very, very, very fortunate to have completed our cookie program sales and collected all the money from those sales, almost all the money, uh, and gotten through the first six months of the fiscal year with minimal impact on our financial statements and our financial condition from the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. The second six months of our fiscal year will look different than planned in that budget. We are utilizing new operational platforms for our different lines of business while being committed to delivering the best possible Girl Scout experience we can. In these changing times, we will continue to follow the direction of all state, local, and national health departments to make necessary program adjustments and decisions related to COVID-19. The situation is being monitored closely and we're evaluating all options available to us. Uh, Madam Chairman, that concludes the Treasurer's report. Uh, but before I give up the mic, can I ask the staff to look at the chat log to see if any questions or relevant comments have come in? Mike Vanek, do you want to take that? Um, yes, I am here and I am in the uh, the questions log. It's uh, We have a question that says, assuming this pandemic runs through the summer, could that lead to possible deficit for the current fiscal year? Um, <clears throat> After the first six months of operations through uh, March 31st, 2020, um, given the fact that we were um, you know, fortunate that we were able to uh, have our uh, cookie program um, close and be completed um, on March 8th, um, you know, we were able to um, you know, enjoy the benefits of, of uh, a cookie program um, from start to finish with, without being interrupted by the pandemic. And so the fact that we were able to complete the cookie program um, and our other lines of revenue were also tracking favorable to budget, um, after the first six months of operations, uh, you know, we are, we are tracking over $400,000 favorable to budget after the first six months of operations. So we're going into the second six months with a with a, a good favorability to budget. Now, in the second six months, uh, one of the things we are currently doing is a lot of financial modeling, different scenarios. Um, you know, we have not, you know, at this time made a a final decision on, um, you know, the entire camp season, you know, for July and August. So we are. You know, running different financial models, and um, you know we will be. There will be a shortfall in our uh, second six months uh, for revenue for camps and programs. But um, depending on the um, you know the the modeling that we're doing uh, right now, I would say that I mean there. I believe that we will still generate a surplus. Um, even through uh, the next six months, uh, depending on the decision for the camps. So I hope that answers that question. Um, there is another question that says, what's an example of benefits back to the troops? Um, well, uh, aside from the um, girl and adult recognitions, um, benefits back to the troops, an example of that would be um, a lot of the uh, some of the surplus or the, uh, the the cookie revenue helps support a lot of our other operations. Uh, for example, camps, so that um, you know we we are able to utilize uh, some of the rev revenue from our cookie uh, 
program that goes to help support our camp programs. So that's an example of um, another benefit that uh, goes back to the troops. Um, do we have another question? Um, Mike, I can see somebody asked if we're giving out more scholarships. I'm not sure if they mean this year or in general. We give out about $25,000 in scholarships every year, and we're continuing to do that this year. I think also something um, to note is that we did qualify for a small business association loan, and we've also frozen all open positions. So we're going to be carrying forward a 20% savings into the last six months of this fiscal year for personnel, which is a significant amount. So um, in addition to some of the other choices that we're going to make, we're going to end the year just fine. Can we keep going? Um, I think those are the... Um, That's all the questions. questions we have. Yeah, agreed. Thanks, Mike. So Kim, I think it's your turn to take over for the management report. Great, thank you, Debbie, and thank you, Rick. It's my honor to serve as the CEO of Girl Scouts of Eastern Pennsylvania and to work alongside all of you to serve our girls. My management report will cover year three of our strategic plan, Leadership for the Future, its five goals and what we're able to accomplish. A more comprehensive account is included in the annual report, which you should all be receiving virtually directly following this meeting. Our plan has seven guiding principles, leadership, community, service, inclusion, respect, integrity, and innovation. Our vision is to be known as the premier leadership organization for girls that is driven by an engaged community of volunteers, members, alumni, partners, and staff, and supported by an organizational culture of service, learning, and growth. Our organization, the organization prioritized diversity, equity, and inclusion by defining the terms for GSEP and determining goals to successfully serve all populations of girls in our footprint. We conducted research using census and GSUSA data, which revealed that our staff, volunteer, and girl populations need more representation from African-American, Latina, and Asian communities. Recruitment plans to meet diversity goals for members, volunteers, staff, and board were developed, and leadership inclusion training was offered for volunteers, including informational resources for specific special needs to encourage an empowered and comfortable environment for all members. To promote a culture that is inspiring, cohesive, and supportive of the Girl Scouts mission, we reinvented several of our regional spaces, including Valley Forge's new lobby shop front desk area and the Friendship Corner, AKA Quiet Room for staff and volunteer use. Communications. Prioritizing external visibility and promotion continued to be a focus to address the competitive marketplace. We saw an enormous increase in interest and visibility by the general public during membership year 19. GSEP expanded its social media marketing efforts with a call to action deliverable. As a result, we were able to increase the number of engaged followers. The frequency of our messaging led to an increase in new and renewed member activation and consistent communications with volunteers, parents, Girl Scouts, alum, funders, community partners, and the public. It also provided resources and opportunities for volunteers, members, and other stakeholders to tell their Girl Scout story. This groundwork certainly positioned us well for our current virtual environment. The communications focus group provided volunteer feedback and ideas for the spring renewal and for product program top sellers. The results included a menu of renewal incentives that were well received by volunteers and parents, and a Cookie Boss and 500 Club experience that was planned with extensive volunteer and girl input. We also provided county-specific marketing tools, flyers and brochures for service units to use to market programs to their local audiences. The overall goal was to engage as well as inform our girls and their families of programs, camp offerings, 
volunteer opportunities, and other activities. There was also an increased focus on promoting the Girl Scout Gold Award. GSCP created a Highest Awards Toolkit to provide girls with the resources they need to self-promote their accomplishments, including press releases, media contacts, contacts for local congresspeople, social media tips, and other ways girls can inform the media and their local community leaders about their projects. Girl Experience. Surveys, focus groups, and program data inform the continual improvement of the girl experience and help drive programmatic decision making. A program steering committee was created of older Girl Scout members, cadets, seniors, and ambassadors who are among the most involved. This committee helped by co-creating programs and providing feedback about plans, retail items, recruitment ideas, and more with the goal of positively impacting our ability to provide the full Girl Scout leadership experience to all girls. This group, with the support of the Girl and Volunteer Experience Committee of the Board of Directors, developed the Girl Track for girls in grades nine through 12 to the 2020 Women's Leadership Summit. Our Cookie Boss class of 2019 consisted of 437 girls, a distinction celebrating girls who sold 1,000 packages of cookies or more. New for 2019, the sister benefits, where sister Girl Scouts share and achieve their cookie goal together, benefited 186 girls who were added to the Cookie Boss class and 350 girls to the 500 club. Later today, you will learn about the top sellers from the Cookie Boss class of 2020. I'm incredibly proud of them and, and I'm also in awe of their accomplishments and promise to celebrate them properly when we get out of this quarantine. GSCP engaged more than 12,447 girls in programs focused on the following priority areas, adventure and water, health and wellness, environment, arts and culture, and STEM. Summer camp registrations reached an all-time high with more than 4,635 girls attending GSEP resident and day camps in 2019. Parents and guardians of campers in 2019 most frequently identified increased confidence and independence as an impact of camp on their campers. Girls themselves noted that camp has made a difference for them during the school year by helping them feel more comfortable meeting new people, working with others and adapting to different personalities and feeling more confident in taking charge. 94% of girls surveyed said they would recommend camp to a friend, and 92% of campers said they would like to come to camp next year. The volunteer experience. GSCP's volunteer support team provided relationship management and support to service unit managers and troop leaders. In addition to providing consistent communications in the form of monthly digital roundtable meetings and weekly email newsletters, GSEP revised several resources for volunteers, often in partnership with updated resources from GSUSA. The result was updated versions of the Leader's Guide for Success, Volunteer Essentials, which included several programmatic improvements and a searchable web version, a volunteer toolkit guide, the Family Guide for New Families, Product Program Manuals, and Regionalized Spark Program Guides. GSCP focused on improving the new leader process and empowered the volunteer training team to be the primary support for new leaders in 2020. The number of GSCP learning facilitators increased by 12% in 2019. This is the result of an effort to recruit a more diverse group of facilitators who represent all counties and demographics. We also increased in-person trainings, recognizing that everyone learns differently, and new truth leaders in particular should have in-person and online options available to them. Financial sustainability and revenue enhancement. The finance team worked collaboratively with Girl Experience and volunteer support to effectively communicate the critical relationship between membership, revenue, and programming. programming. GSCP provided dedicated resources to maximize facility rentals from service units, troops, and some outside groups, resulting in a 53% increase in utilization over prior year. As our treasurer Rick Perkins reported, functional expense ratios for Girl Scout programs over the past five years 
has positively moved from 72% in membership year 2015 to 84% in membership year 2019. GSCP continues to evaluate expense line items for ongoing operational necessity, efficiency, and alignment to mission. I'm going to pause now and check the chat log for any relevant questions or comments. Kim, we have nothing in the chat log right now. Okay, before I turn it over to the Board Development Committee, I want to take this opportunity to thank all of you again for your continued commitment to our mission. Your dedication as delegates is palpable, and it has been my honor to work with you to ensure that every girl in our nine county footprint is aware of and has access to the full Girl Scout leadership experience. Thank you. I'd like to welcome Susan Muccheroni, board member and chair of the Board Development Committee, who will present the Board Development Committee report. Susan? Thank you, Kim, and good morning, everyone. The four board members on the Board Development Committee, which I'm going to refer to as the BDC mostly going forward, but the four board members are myself, Susan Muccheroni, Chair, Ann Baum, Debbie O'Brien, and Deb Walters, Secretary and Chair of the Bylaws Policy Review Committee. And they're currently are four non-board members on the BDC, Laura Azalina, Mary Beth Biddle, Michelle Box, and Miriam Shu. The BDC has five slates to present today, board members at large, girl advisors to the board, board development committee members, girl delegates, 2020 National Council session delegates. The BDC has been working since last summer to recruit and vet candidates for each of these positions. We have two candidates for first term board members at large, four board members being elected for their second term, and three nominees for non-board BDC members. Plus, we had two subcommittees reviewing over 100 applications for the girl delegate, girl advisor, and NCS delegate positions. Those two subcommittees did a great job in identifying worthy candidates that represent the various diverse aspects of GSEP, including race, ethnicity, age, geography, and past governance experience. So the five respective slates and the biographies of the board, BDC, and girl advisors were included in the official notice mailed to the Delegate Council 30 days ago. So now I'll review the respective slates and present them to our board chair for the vote. Before doing so, I will remind you that our bylaws state in Article 3, Section 6C, nominations from the floor must have been submitted to the Board Development Committee Chair at the Council Office at least seven days prior to the annual meeting. We didn't receive any requests for nominations from the floor, therefore, these are uncontested elections this year. So the candidates for first term board members at large are Claire Frymuth and Jennifer Fox. The four board members being reelected for a second term are Joanne McFall, Debbie O'Brien, Shelley Smith, and Allison Snyder. Madam Chair, I present the slate of the board members at large. Thank you, Susan. And now it's time to vote on the slate for board members at large. As a reminder, this is the third of our eight votes this morning. So each delegate council member will again need to go back to your voting link online and enter the password for question number three, the board member nominee. The password for this vote number three, as shown on your slide, is FUN, lowercase. So please, after you make your selection, remember to click on the arrow in the green box so it can be logged. And we'll pause here so that we can take a tally while you vote.
And we'll let our tellers inform us when we have reached the total. Hi there, this is Charlene. Uh, just letting you know we have 139 votes in favor of the slate. And so we've met our, our uh, majority? We have, yes. Thank you, Charlene. So per the vote, the slate of board members at large is elected. Congratulations to our newly elected board members. So next, um, we'll, uh, I'll join you, Deb, in congratulations. Um, next, the sl and thanks. Next, the slate as presented by the Board Development Committee is for girl advisors to the Board of Directors. Paris Graves, Michaela Havers and Rachel Thornton are the nominees for girl advisors. Madam Chair, I will now ask for the vote on this slate. Thank you, Susan. And again, following the process we've been utilizing, please go back to your vote number four and insert lowercase stem to do the voting. And we'll pause here while everyone does that until Charlene and our tellers can tell us the results. This is Charlene. Just want to let you know that we have 136 votes in favor and we've met the 51%. Great. Thank you, Charlene. There being a majority in favor, the slate of girl advisors to the board is officially elected. Congratulations to our new girl advisors. Likewise. Susan, back yep. Likewise. Congratulations. Now the slate for the board development committee. We have two candidates for their first terms on the BDC, Laura Azalina and Allison Green, and Miriam Shu is being reelected for her second term. Madam Chair, I present the slate of the Board Development Committee members. Thank you, Susan. And we will now proceed to vote five, and your password is play, all lowercase. And I, we will pause waiting for the results of that vote. This is Charlene, just letting you know that we are at at least 131 in favor, and that surpasses the 51%. Great. Thank you, Charlene. There being a majority in favor, the slate of the Board Development Committee members has been officially elected. Congratulations to all of our new BDC members. Susan? Likewise. Thank you, and congratulations. It is now my pleasure to introduce the Girl Delegate Slate. The Girl Governance Committee, 
a subcommittee of the Board Development Committee, was comprised of a current board member, two past board members, and a current BDC member. Determining the girl delegate slate is quite an involved process. This year, the committee created a standardized scoring rubric and each reviewed the 48 applications individually. The group met together and shared their scores and discussed the candidates collectively. They also reviewed the potential slate to guarantee diversity in terms of race and ethnicity, grade level, county, and past service as a girl delegate. The Girl Governance Committee then presented their nominations to the Board Development Committee, who approved the slate for presentation to the Delegate Council today. I will now read the names of the slate of Girl Delegate nominees. They will serve a one-year term beginning at the close of this meeting. For the position of Girl Delegate for the 2020 to 2021 term, we have Aisha Ali, Mackenzie Beals, Anika Chowdhury, Abigail Dwyer, Amelia Folk, Katie Hafer, Megan Hughes, Lauren Labruto, Sarah Mash, Taylor Mueller, Rhea Naveen, Kaylee Overby, Emer Emerson Piancine, Elizabeth Kean, Christian Roach, Victoria Robinson, Shayla Rohr, Cami Samuel, Catherine Sarte, Suzanne Schlage, Alessandra Scipioni, Catherine Shea, Kate Slavin, Devin Steck, Phoebe Ann Wagner, Gabriella Weinstein, Serena Williams, and Maya Young. Madam Chair, I present the slate of the girl delegates. Thank you. It's now time to vote on the slate for girl delegates. This will be our sixth vote of the morning. And proceeding with the same process, the code for this one is CAMP lowercase. We will now pause to take the vote. Deb, um, you skipped two of the names on the slide. Oh, there's a typo on the script. Um, Carla, do you want to chime in with the names, please? Sorry, go ahead. Um, I know that we, um, I unintentionally, and forgive me, um, I know we, Lillian Carlson was inadvertently left off. I don't know if who the other person was, I apologize. But this is the entire girl slate right here on the slide. Oh. It was Emma, Emma Smirk. Oh, Emma, sorry, apologies to Emma and Lillian. You will be joining, you are part of this slate. All 30 of these girls are hopefully being voted on right now. All um, right, so Carla, may I interject to just correct for a minute? So the slide that everyone sees on the screen is not missing any of our candidates, correct? Correct, and nor was the slate that was mailed out on April 2nd. All right, so I just wanna draw everyone's attention back to the full list of names. You're voting on the names on the slide. And we'll pause again to vote. We are currently at 139 in favor of the sleep. Great. So there being a majority in the, the affirmative, the slate of girl delegates as shown on the preceding slide has been elected. Congratulations, and I'll turn it back to Susan. Thank you, Debbie. And congratulations to um, our new girl delegates. Um, so normally we would invite all of the girls onto the stage to receive their girl delegate pins from our board chair and CEO. Given our current environment, we'll be presenting you with the pins at the fall delegate meeting in September. Thank you girls for your understanding. 
So every three years, GSEP chooses a delegation to represent us at the National Council session. As Debbie explained earlier, GSUSA has canceled the in-person portion of the national meeting. However, we still need our NCS delegates to participate in what will now be a virtual meeting. The NCS Delegate Selection Committee also had quite a challenge. 54 people submitted applications for one of the 25 delegate positions. This subcommittee of the board consisted of one board member, one non-board BDC member, and two board members who are also members of the board development committee. They reviewed each application individually, completed the scoring rubric, and then met to discuss each candidate collectively. They chose a slate of qualified candidates who represent the diversity in our council in terms of age, race and ethnicity, county, and previous NCS experience. Current girl members are also part of the slate and are indicated by asterisks on the next slide. I'll read the names of the nominees and then turn this over to our board chair for final vote on the slate. And this time I'll ask if there's any discrepancy between um, the names I read in the slate, maybe we can um, address that before we call for the vote. All right, so let's start. Sarah Campbell, Brianna Davis, the, the 2020 NCS delegate nominees are Sarah Campbell, Brianna Davis, Sandra Faust, Kim Freitas Dow, Claire Frymuth, Susan Groff, Debbie Hassan, Michaela Havers, Amanda Hunts, uh, Huntsberger, Kathy Limbaugh, Morgan Limbaugh, Raquel Lopez, Angie Manning, Christy Piancine, Bridget Powell, Christine Reber, Christian Roach, Monica Roach, Katrina Rossiter, Heather Chenier, Anusha Sindhya, Olga Torres, Deb Walters, Suzanne Walters, and Serena Williams. And our NCS alternate delegate nominees are Naya Cherry, Diane Nordmark, and Devin Steck. Madam Chair, I present the slate of the NCS and alternate NCS delegates. Okay, thank you, Susan. So I think we have the drill down. The password for vote number seven is all lowercase tree, and we are going to wait for that tabulation. We are currently at 133 votes in favor of this slate. Thank you, Charlene. There being a majority in favor, the slate of the 2020 National Council delegates and alternate delegates has been elected. Congratulations, ladies. And thank you again, Charlene, and all of our tellers for confirming the votes. Big thank you to Susan and the entire Board Development Committee for all your work this year on developing all five slates for such exceptional women and girls. And at this point, we have one more very important item to vote on, item number eight. To introduce this motion, I wanna turn the meeting over to Deb Walters, Chair of the Bylaws Committee. Deb? Thank you, Debbie. As our Board Chair mentioned earlier, this committee has been working for the past eight months on updating GSEP's bylaws. This group has met a dozen times for three hours a night, which is the equivalent of one person working 24-7 for more than two weeks straight. And that does not include all the additional small group meetings and their research time. I need to send a great big thank you to the bylaws committee for helping to birth this new proposed bylaws. Thanks to all of you guys, you're awesome. 
So I won't spend too much time on an overview, but I do want to reiterate that GSEP has been working with a strong, complete set of bylaws since our founding 13 years ago, yesterday. Yesterday was our anniversary. Our bylaws were created from a formation of the best practices from our three legacy councils. We have produced a few amendments along the way, but this is the first time we've had a comprehensive, deep, broad dive into what can and should be updated. And we started with you, our delegate council members. You produced 139 comments and questions, and the committee went from there. We used the resources shown on the slide, including many sister councils bylaws. We talked to a number of governance experts. We did a deep dive into state law around nonprofit governance as well. We also did our best to educate and inform you about our work along the way, including producing four special education editions of the Governance Bulletin, hosting a dedicated webinar back in February. Our ultimate goal was to skinny the bylaws by making them clearer and stronger while maintaining the flexibility and legal requirements needed to govern such a complex organization as GSEP. So the updates to the bylaws revolve around three areas, clarity, definitions, and change. Examples of all these revisions were included in the official notice for this meeting, so I won't read the whole list, but I do want to explain just a few. For example, our current bylaws use the term may, shall, will, somewhat interchangeably. Based on legal definitions, the committee determined that we should be using the word must. That word is very clear in its meaning. In its meaning. So that has replaced may, shall, and will. An example of why definitions are important involve around the words governance year. In Girl Scouts, we know our membership year is October 1 to September 30. But here in GSEP, we elect our new board members and girl delegates in May, as in today. Therefore, we determined that their term should begin immediately upon election at the annual meeting, hence governance year, from one annual meeting to another. And finally, we made some simple but necessary changes. For instance, we updated the responsibilities of the treasurer since we now have a much more complex organization than our smaller legacy councils did 13 years ago, and many more of those duties fall on the chief financial officer. That is a brief summary of the highlights of the bylaws. Madam Chair, I hereby move on behalf of the entire bylaws committee for the benefit of all Girl Scouts of Eastern Pennsylvania, the adoption of the proposed GSEP bylaws revision as a substitute for the present bylaws. Thank you again, Deb, and the entire committee who served with you for the tremendous effort you've all put into this work. To our delegate council, the bylaws committee, which was appointed by the board of directors to prepare these revised bylaws, has made a motion. Because the motion arises from a committee, it does not require a second. Please know the Board of Directors voted earlier this morning to support adoption of these new proposed bylaws. Our parliamentarian has confirmed that the current existing bylaws are not up for debate or amendment. An opportunity to make amendments to these new proposed bylaws was made available to the delegate council members in the official notice and no suggested amendments were received. Therefore, the new proposed bylaws will be voted on as a whole for immediate adoption. Before we move into the official vote, I want to pause here and have the staff check the chat log to see if any pertinent questions or comments have come in. Again, if you have a question or comment, please click on the raise your hand button and type it into the chat log. And as a reminder, our parliamentarian has the final word on whether any questions or comments are relevant to this motion. So we will now pause. And ladies, let us know if anything relevant has come in. Debbie, there's nothing in the chat log at this time. Okay, thank you. 
And thank you again for reading over the bylaws, everyone, and being prepared to vote. As a reminder, we need two thirds of our delegate council members to vote yes in order for the new proposed bylaws to be adopted. That means we need at least 120 yes votes. As this is our last official vote, I'm not gonna go back through the drill other than our last password is last. So we will pause there to allow everyone to vote. I think while we're waiting and we need the people to vote, are we going to be able to show a short video at this point? Yes. Thank you, Charlene. Greetings from Cadet Troop 8133. One, two, three. Make new friends, but keep the old. One is silver and the other's gold. A circle is round, it has no end. That's how long I want to be your friends. Bye. Yeah. So we are at 136 votes in favor and one opposed. We needed 120, so we have surpassed that. Great. Um, and before we do, I just want to mention that the video was from Cadet Troop 8133 in Northampton County and very cute. Thank you for doing that. And based on that, vote there being two-thirds in the affirmative the new bylaws are adopted our new bylaws go into effect immediately deb walters and her committee are probably celebrating as we speak congratulations for all the hard work and long hours and incredible input and i have no doubt our bylaws will now become a model for other councils thank you again at this point in time, there's just one little piece of housekeeping. If there are no objections, the bylaws committee is also authorized to correct any punctuation, article, and section designations for cross-referencing pur purposes and other technical and conforming changes as may be necessary to reflect the intent of our organization with the adoption of our new bylaws. If there are any objections, voting members can type into the chat log now. As a reminder, guests and non-voting members may not participate in this authorization. And we'll pause and ladies let us know if there's any objections. Okay, hearing none, passed. So, go ahead. Sorry, I'm muted too fast. I have nothing right now. Okay, great. Um, thank you all for sticking with us during this, our first ever virtual annual meeting, which I think from my perspective has gone incredibly well. I could even hear and click the buttons and I'm feeling pretty good with myself. And my dog didn't bark, so <laughs> I'm thanking him too. I wanna give a big shout out to our parliamentarian, Mary Scout, for joining us and helping us through this voting process. And I have to say, I'm incredibly proud of the entire organization for continuing to function through this difficult time in as normal a way as possible, but also frankly, setting the stage for how work can proceed going forward in a new environment. Um, Mary had told us 
In advance, some not-for-profits decided to delay annual meetings such as ours due to the public health crisis, as have some other Girl Scout councils. But here at GSCP, we know we are strong, capable, and resourceful. So thank you to all involved in this voting process and for your participation. We still have a bit of celebrating, so if you haven't already, you might wanna stand up and take a stretch. At this point in time, while you stretch, I'm gonna turn the agenda over to Terry Boyer. Terry is co-chair of the Membership Strategy Committee of the board. She will be sharing the names and successes of our top cookie sellers, so we can recognize them today. Terry, take us away. Terry, hold on one second. I'm finding you to unmute you. All right, you should be unmuted. Go ahead. Yes. Hi, everyone, and thank you, Debbie. I'm very excited to be here with all of you during this virtual gathering. As you all know, the Girl Scout cookie program is about more than just cookies. Um, and as my own daughter Girl Scouts are wont to tell you, participation in the cookie program provides girls the opportunity to develop five key skills, goal setting, decision making, money management, people skills, and business ethics. Although I have to say my Daisy often stumbles over the ethics <laughs> word. Um, girls, you are truly girls, go-getters, innovators, risk takers, and leaders. You who are leading the way. Through the cookie program, you're not only earning money for your troop to do great things, but you're also supporting the council overall. And that was obvious in the financial report we heard earlier today. On behalf of the Girl Scouts of Eastern PA, I would like to say a sincere, sincere thank you to the service units, troop leaders, and parents who supported the girls in the cold and helped to make this year's cookie program a success. Now it's time to announce by age level, the 2020 top three sellers. Normally at an in-person meeting, each girl would come up on the stage to receive a certificate from our CEO. Girls, please know that your top cookie seller certificates will be mailed to you. So to begin our top cookie sellers at the Daisy level, we have Soraya Jones, with, oh, sorry. <laughs> Our third highest selling Daisy is Aubrey Bradley of Troop 53233 Incarnate Valley Service Unit with 1,510 boxes. Our second highest Daisy is Olivia Jackson of Troop 91234 in South Philadelphia Service Unit with 2,000 boxes. And our highest selling Daisy is Soraya Jones with Troop 22028 in the Ben Salem Service Unit with 2,502 boxes. Fantastic work, girls. Now, if we move to the brownie level, among our brownies, our third highest selling brownie was Journey Hobson of Troop 749 in the Mill Creek Service Unit with 2,117 boxes. Our second highest selling brownie was Natalie Hawks of Troop 5429 in the Ridley Springfield Connection Service Unit with 2,224 boxes. And our highest selling brownie was Scootaloo Loudenslager with Troop 6169 in the Allentown Service Unit with 4,000 324 boxes. Wow, what great selling skills, girls. Next, we move to our juniors with our third highest selling junior being Gabriella Powell of Troop 247 in the Liberty Trail Service Unit with 2,245 boxes. Our second highest junior is Diana Stubbs of Troop 9454 in the Three Leaf Service Unit with 2,890 boxes. And our highest selling junior is Stella Perez of Troop 93547 in North Central Service Unit with a whopping 5,501 boxes. Girls, amazing job this year. Among our cadets, 
Our third highest selling cadet is Ava Kending of Troop 21041 in the Nishamani Service Unit with 3,042 boxes. Our second highest selling cadet would be Maya Kearns of Troop 21041 in the Nishamani Service Unit with 3,200 boxes. Clearly, that troop is doing something right. And our highest selling cadet is Kaya Everett, Ka Kyla Everett of Troop 9629 in the Tucany Service Unit with 4,016 boxes. Again, remarkable effort, girls. Among our seniors, our third highest selling senior is Melanie Theron of Troop 9696 in Three Leaves Service Unit with 3,249 boxes. Our second highest selling senior is Simone Johnson of Troop 9696 in Three Leaf Service Unit as well with 4,000 boxes. Clearly another troop with two top cookie sellers and doing a great job. And our highest selling senior is Maya Young of Troop 91 in the Buttons and Bows Service Unit with 4,019 boxes. Our seniors are clearly doing a great job and thank you all ladies for your wonderful efforts. Among our ambassadors, our third highest selling ambassador is Hannah Mangold of Troop 6846 in the Allentown Service Unit with 3,134 boxes. Our second highest selling ambassador is Nigla Miller of Troop 5251 in the MCCUL service unit with 3,178 boxes. And our highest selling ambassador is Rachel Thornton of Troop 9517 in the Buttons and Bows service unit with 4,220 boxes. Again, very impressive this year, ladies. I just want to shine a spotlight on those top five cookie sellers in the entire council. From these five girls alone, we sold 22,080 boxes. Their phenomenal efforts need to be applauded. As a reward for your hard work and success, GSEP was going to take each of those girls to Orlando this fall to be part of the National Council Session event. But unfortunately, as you heard earlier, this event has been canceled. We are still planning on celebrating these five young women though in a special way. As you can see in this slide, Stella Perez sold the most boxes of the entire council and she's been named the 2020 Cookie CEO. She will be spending a day with our CEO at the office and learning more about what it takes to run such a successful organization like ours. Congratulations, Stella. Now I'm turning the meeting back over to you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Terry, and thank you to all 18 of our top cookie sellers, especially Stella, our cookie CEO for 2020. And lest we forget, we also need to acknowledge all the troop leaders and parents who lived for a couple of months with stacks and stacks of boxes and cartons of cookies who motivated and supported our girls in their quest to become successful entrepreneurs. A huge thank you to all of the adults in the cookie sale as well as the girls. And I'm just gonna clap and everybody can join if they want, but kudos to all of you. And finally, we turn to our last group of girls to recognize our award and scholarship recipients. For this portion of the meeting, I'm gonna turn over the mic to board members, Ann Donnelly and Deb Walters. Ladies. Thank you, Debbie, and hello, everyone. I would like to start off with the Union League of Philadelphia Good Citizenship Award. This recognition offers awards for Girl Scouts in their junior year of high school and who have shown marked evidence of good citizenship. Girls who are selected to receive the award attend an event called Good Citizens Day, hosted by the Union League of Philadelphia. 
It has been postponed from this month until October. On that day, they will network and attend educational sessions where they learn about the U.S. Constitution before participating in debates. In the afternoon, they take a tour of the Philadelphia City Hall, and in the evening, they attend the banquet where they celebrate being chosen to receive the Good Citizenship Award. The 16 girls who were nominated for the Good Citizenship Award by Girl Scouts of Eastern Pennsylvania will be recognized today. They are Genevieve Irich, Sakshi Jarota, Darcy Hammer, Delany Hampton, Megan Hughes, Elizabeth Condisco, Sarah Mash, Rebecca Nestor, Emerson Piacine, Trinity Pryor, Valentina Souza, Avery Stimmel, Rachel Thornton, Margaret Wade, Serena Williams, Marley Yambor. These 16 girls will be eligible to apply for a Union League of Philadelphia College Scholarship during their senior year of high school. Good luck, girls, and thank you for representing GSEP with such grace and grit. The next portion of the ceremony will recognize the girls who are receiving scholarships. The scholarship committee reviewed applications from 86 girls who applied for 11 scholarships. Each award or scholarship has different criteria, requirements, and application processes. Girls, please know that you will each be receiving a certificate in the mail acknowledging your scholarship. I will let Dawn Harper announce the first scholarship recipient. Dawn? Dawn, I can see that you are in as an attendee, as a phone only. I cannot unmute you. Can you unmute yourself? And we might need to move forward, but I know that Dawn, oh. No, I, I don't know that Dawn will be able to speak right now. Do you want me to take that one or do you want me to hold on that in case Dawn can unmute? Uh, why don't we move forward just in case, but we'll come back to it. Okay. If that's okay. Yes. We oh, well, wait, next... no. we're going to we're going to ruin the surprise. Uh, and why don't you please announce it? I know that Dawn uh, feels strongly about this and I'm sure she supports uh, whoever was chosen. OK, so I'm speaking for Dawn. Is that the case at the moment? Yes, please. OK, um, so the, Dawn was going to present the Renee Carol Harper Memorial Scholarship, and I do know that's a special scholarship for Dawn. The recipient this year is Brianna Davis. Congratulations, yeah. Brianna. So the next scholarship is the uh, Judy Boree Award, and the recipient is Sydney Machion. This scholarship provides funds for continuing education to one Girl Scout ambassador who has earned her, gold, her Girl Scout Gold Award and demonstrated high academic achievement. The Elizabeth G. Dorset Memorial Scholarship recipient is Cecilia Weaver. Now for the Janet and Solomon Eschner College Scholarship, which provides funds for continuing education to one Girl Scout ambassador with leadership potential. The recipient of this scholarship is J. Lynn Johnson. This scholarship recognizes four Girl Scouts who undertake projects that enhance the motivation, aspiration, and self-esteem of girls under 18. This year's recipients of the Margaret Glenn Esty Award are Sabrina Adler, Corinne Carlson, Tatiana Davis, Bridget Scheider. And now the Kiwanis Award which is given to a girl who has demonstrated an understanding and commitment to the overall philosophy of Girl Scouting and has proven that she truly lives the Girl Scout law 
and provides funds for continuing education. This year, we have two recipients. Each will receive a scholarship. Congratulations to Rebecca Anistad and Brianna Davis. Next, the Muriel E. Lehman Award honors one Girl Scout senior or ambassador who has done the most to promote friendship among persons of different ethnic backgrounds. This year's recipient is Naya Cherry. This scholarship is given to a graduating ambassador who is a model student and gives of herself to family, friends, and those in need. The recipient of the Monet Ragsdale Mabry Scholarship is Jalen Johnson. We would now like to announce the girls who will receive the Girl Scouts of Eastern Pennsylvania Graduating Senior Scholarship. This scholarship is fully funded through the Alumni Committee's Adult Camping Weekend, which is held every August. The number of graduating senior scholarships that are awarded each year is determined by the amount of money raised at the event. Since 2010, this committee has raised more than $99,000 in scholarships for Girl Scouts. The Girl Scouts of Eastern Pennsylvania Graduating Senior Award is being awarded to 13 graduating senior Girl Scouts. These girls demonstrate leadership involvement within the community. The money is to be used toward continuing education and each girl will receive an award of $1,000. The 13 girls receiving this scholarship are Rebecca Atkins, Alexandra Afiero, Pervy Barney, Corinne Carlson, Naya Cherry, Jamie Hallahan, Molly Hughes, Ellie Joseph, Lena Kugelman, Rebecca Laramir, Elizabeth McEwen. Katherine Smith, Cecilia Weaver. Congratulations, girls. Congratulations. Madam Chair, Madam Chair, the meeting is now yours again. Thank you, ladies. Thank you, Deb Ann and Dawn. And congratulations to all the scholarship awardees. Great job. A big debt of gratitude is also due to the scholarship committee members who, as you heard, reviewed the 86 applications. Thank you for all your dedication and work in helping our girls succeed in the future. And thank you to everybody who is still on this webinar to the end. I think our first virtual annual meeting has gone really, really well. And I have just one reminder to make before we end our time together today. Next slide. We all know how impactful the Girl Scout leadership experience is for girls. We want to make sure we continue to help build girls of courage, confidence, and character who make the world a better place, particularly in this critical time of challenge for the world. Yesterday, our spring renewal campaign kicked off. Through June 30, we are asking all of our members to consider renewing your Girl Scout membership for membership year 2021, if you have not already done so. There are a number of incentives to renew early. For example, if girls renew in May, they'll receive a t-shirt and a patch. There are also incentives for troop leaders and service units who have a 70% renewal rate. We hope you will renew today, or at least in the near term. We are ending our annual meeting today with a very special, um, sorry, very special mission moment. Maya, would you please share your Silver Project Award with us at this time? Maya, you should be unmuted. Can you try speaking? Can you unmute yourself? There you go. I see you. Thank you, Mrs. Husson, for the kind introduction. Since we are all impacted by the current public health crisis, I was inspired by what is happening in the world around us. I put together a short video to show you and other Girl Scouts what I did. Thank you.
My Girl Scout Silver Award Project. Hi, I'm Maya Perk. I'm a Girl Scout working on my silver award. Right now in 2020, we are in the middle of the COVID-19 pandemic. In an uncertain world that seems scary, I saw a problem and took action. One of my Girl Scout leaders is an auntie. She said, we are starting to run out of PPE. I'm scared. We don't have enough masks to keep everyone safe. I had to try and make a mask. I did, but it wasn't very good at first. The EMTs were requesting a packet in the mail to add an extra filter. It took a couple of tries, but I got it. But I started to think, how can I help? I started a blog, mayascreations.wordpress.com, with a tutorial on how to make my masks. Here's how to make a mask. One, two different pieces of fabric and cut them six inches by nine inches. Two, Upside down and fold one side a half an inch down. Then pleat until the side is three inches long and pin in place. So each piece separately. Three. Measure and cut your elastic to six and a half inches. Next, line up your fabric with the pleats at the top. The fabric should be inside out with the pretty sides in. Pin your elastic to their corners on both short sides of the mask. Four. Sew the two pieces together. Start at the open pleated end and sew around to all three unfinished sides, making sure to secure the elastic into the corners. Do not sew the pleated side together. Five, turn the mask right side out. You're almost done. Six, pleat the long side to match your other pleats. Make sure your pleats go in the same direction. Secure with pins. Seven, Starting at the open side, sew around the edges to give it a finished look. Sew the pins pleats in place. 8. Trim any loose thread. You did it! Your mask is ready to help protect someone from COVID-19. Home Depot donated the filters that I needed for inside my masks. My story made the local paper! Lots of first responders were asking for help. All of the positive feedback made me want to do more. I am starting a Facebook page. Maya Simple Masks. Soon I was reaching thousands of people. I was getting tons of likes. I ran into another little problem. Wearing a mask every day for 14 hours straight is for many years. What can we do? I wanted to help with this too. I remembered seeing something online. A Boy Scout from Canada named Quinn had designed 3D printed ear guards to help with ear pain from wearing masks a long time. Quinn has shared his design for free. I used the power of social media to see if someone with a 3D printer would try making them. A local couple saw my post and 3D printed something. It worked! I now have gear guards to share too. Local Girl Scouts saw a different post of mine and started making rainbow loom ear guards too. My project was going great. Things were really taking off. Hundreds of nurses and first responders were getting front homemade PPE to help keep everyone safe during this COVID-19 pandemic. Here are some fun memories I made along the way. I have donated masks to doctors, nurses, firefighters, police officers, EMTs, veterinarians, restaurants, nursing homes, the Air Force, and the Navy. Thank you for sharing my silver award journey with me.
I never thought that helping one friend would lead to helping people all over the world. Maya, that's incredible. Thank you for sharing your silver project with us and congratulations on making such a difference. Helping thank you. People. Yeah, thank you so much. Keep your medical professionals, police officers, and other workers safe and healthy. You've clearly made the world a better place through your efforts. This officially concludes our 2020 annual meeting and first ever virtual meeting. Thank you again for joining us in this challenging time. Please, I hope you and your families continue to stay happy, healthy, and safe. Thank you again.